Hi, Lee. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> yes, and hello to everyone. I'm going to start from the top, Lee, if you don't mind. We had a little technical issue there, but welcome everyone to Ring Ready Live, the home of the owner handler, brought to you by Showsight Magazine. I am Dan Sayers with Showsight here, as always, with the dog show mentor, Lee Whittier. So, Lee, before we were cut off, I was asking you how you're doing today, and you said you're doing just great. Yes, and uh, and and you know what? We all learn to pivot when these little technical difficulties happen. Um, it They happen all the time. They happen all the time. They happen online. They happen in the ring. They happen at home. And uh, they happen to the best of us. And, and today, Lee, we're going to be asking everyone the question, are you the boss? And more specifically, are you your dog's boss? So again, I want to welcome everyone. Hi, Ray. Hi, Denise. Good to have you here. Everyone, let us know who you are, where you're from. Tell us your breed and let us know if you are your dog's boss. And we're going to dig into the, the, uh, the definition of boss a little bit deeper. And we are going to sort of understand how we can transfer the boss that we are in the rest of our lives into being the boss for our dog. So Lee, as the dog show mentor, you're a coach, you're a leader, but you're the boss here. I don't know if you know that, but you're the boss. So tell us, tell us if you wouldn't mind, um, maybe what, what, does, what does being the boss imply? Yeah, what does it mean to be the boss? Well, you know, when we, when we first thought about this topic, um, you know, I think of it as being a leader. Boss and leader have similar uh, meanings, uh, but to me, you have to not only be the leader of your dog. So, so what we had conceived of was, you know, being the leader of your dog, right? Making sure that your dog understands that you're there to support him, to guide him, to make it a great experience, make it fun for him, right? So we know that. Uh, we've already been through that a hundred times. But what it also means is that when you walk in the ring, you're using the skills that you already have in other areas of your life. So for example, say you're, you were a uh a stay-at-home parent, right? And you decided that you were going to show dogs. You would already have those skills of understanding how to guide, how to be in charge. When you walk into the supermarket, you don't expect somebody else <laughs> to be in charge of your kid, right? And if your kid is misbehaving, you're the one who's taking charge and making sure that they understand what they're doing uh, is wrong. And so, and how to fix it, right? You're the guide, you're in charge. You don't expect anybody else to be in charge of you and your kid. Well, it's the same thing in the ring. When you're standing there looking around, like my dog's misbehaving and I don't know what to do. Somebody tell me what to do. Why don't you know what to do? Why don't you know what to do? How can you say my dog isn't trained? Mm. Well, who's, who's, who's in charge of that? So we're also going to take this little step further, but um, Dan, I, I want to hear what you have to say about this. Well, I like your analogy of the supermarket because we've all been in supermarkets where we've seen children having meltdowns, having tantrums, and we've seen the parents responding in myriad ways. Uh, but when you mentioned supermarket, it made me think of the supermarket manager. So we go into the supermarket, <laughs> right? All the shelves are hopefully well stocked. Hopefully there's toilet hopefully. tissue and everything that we need. And we see the employees behind the deli counter and we see the cashiers and we see, you know, the folks straightening the shelves. All of those folks report ultimately to one person, the leader, the boss. 
you know, it's kind but of. They like all, a, but they also all know their jobs. They, because right? they've been they've been trained. They have their department or their aisles or their shelving that they are responsible for. Somebody has prepared them. That person has a title. Ultimately, they are the boss. You know, I'm, as I'm thinking about it, a supermarket is really not unlike a dog show in that <laughs> there's order. It looks kind of chaotic until you figure out where the spinach is and where, you know, the frozen Brussels sprouts are. And then you go back to that same uh, supermarket every week. You're, you're prepared. All of a sudden you're a boss, you know, and then if you take your children there, you're, you know, you, you have to prove yourself then just as we do <laughs> with our puppy that we've taken to class. And now we're in the in the ring. You know, I, I want to acknowledge that as an owner handler who is working with a, a young pup at this point, it's a very intimidating process, becoming the leader, right? Becoming that support that my dog is expecting to, to, to ultimately realizing that I need to be the boss. Right. And when you have a child, I think you automatically get parenting skills. I mean, you don't, you, you're not just born with them, but boy, you know, if your child starts walking across the street without holding your hand, guess mm. what? You're, you're in charge of that. You don't need anyone to tell you, I need to stop my kid, right? I need to have, make sure that kid is holding my hand. So, you know what I'm saying? I do indeed. And I see that in my neighborhood all the time. Uh, right. uh, there's, there's a bike path outside of my kitchen door. And uh, I see the, I see that happening all the time, both with dogs and with children. And you have me thinking, you know, why, why do we think that our dogs should just somehow <laughs> do things perfectly, you know, <laughs> without our training? without our leadership. I mean, and it, do you think it's because, you know, we're, we're going to shows and we're seeing these dogs that have been prepared, that are in the ring with their leaders, with their bosses, and, um, and that they, we just assume, well, that's our competition. We should be doing it. And why isn't my dog, why isn't my dog standing still? Why isn't my dog moving in a straight line? Why isn't my dog winning ultimately? And I have to think, well, maybe, A, maybe my pup is coming up short against the breed standard, perhaps, but more likely, maybe I haven't done the training. Maybe I haven't gone back to school. Maybe I haven't been the leader that you as the dog show mentor is helping me to become. And uh, and if I may, I just want to use that last comment as a reminder to everyone who joins us here every week that we have 30 minutes of the Dog Show Mentor here at Ring Ready Live. We're coming up on our one year anniversary, which will be next week, and we're, we'll be reviewing a lot of the topics that we've been talking about. But as Lee reminds us, you know, we have access to her in so many other ways as well, in ways that are really going to transform us from uh, maybe a nervous owner handler into the, the boss of a winning team. So Lee, uh, would you mind telling us again how we can get in touch with you? I, I would love to. So as you all know, we have the Dog Show Mentor Owner Handler Facebook page. It's an open page. Um, you just answer a couple of questions and you're in. Uh, we also have the Dog Show Mentor Premium and VIP programs. Um, and we also have the, um, I have fairly regular uh, workshops that are open to non-members and me members alike. Um, so those workshops are going on now. There's currently a three-part series workshop of the Blue Ribbon Blueprint. And previously, it's not been in workshop form. It's been in different formats. Uh, so this is fun because people get to work along with me. And we also have Mastery, which is uh, new this year. And it's for people who really want to take a deep dive into the energy of showing dogs and 
how to walk in that ring and make sure you are the one to beat. Your dog is the one to beat. And that's your energy with your dog as a team, as the leader of your team. And that in, in mastery, we talk about that energy of being being in the in that energetic moment where the one that in the past has been the one to beat and now your dog is in that place and so that's pretty exciting um, for these people so if any of that interests you uh get in touch with me uh private message on messenger or email um i'd love to hear from you and I want to add that if you have been helped by Ring Ready Live during the past year, if it has helped you to improve your interaction with your dog yeah, at absolutely. home and in the ring, uh, by all means, um, if you're ready to go to that next level, Dog Show Mentor is the program for you. And I want to give a shout out to some of the folks who have been commenting, and I'd like to read their comments uh, yeah, in, in a bit. So I want to say hello to Ray and Sarah. Sherry is always with us, as is Denise. Shelly, hello. Rageshwar is back with us, as so is Ginger. Kathleen from Snohomish is here, as is Linda in Ohio, and Carrie is back with us as well. So thank you, everyone. Uh, I want to comment um, or read a comment here from Sarah Lee, who has said that Ring Ready Live has helped her grow and has helped her Ibethan Hound Vinny, and she achieved their first owner handled group first. So congratulations Ooh. to Sarah and Vinny. Um, if Ring Ready Live has helped you to achieve that owner handled group first, uh, Sarah, I can only imagine what being a member of Dog Show Mentor <laughs> <means to you. laughs> but, uh, but we're very, very happy to hear of your success and thank you for sharing. And Ray, I wanna read your message as well. Uh, his Basenji, Jack is a two-year-old and his first show dog and Ray and Jack are figuring things out together. <laughs> Ray says that Jack definitely plays him sometimes. He can be- stuck. I love that. I love Ooh. that. <laughs> and this is really important that Jack reads Ray's stress and nervous level at times. And together they just work through it the best they can. And at the end of the day, he is his dog first and a fun show dog second. That's a great- <laughs> I love that. Ray and and he I plays love, you. That is so awesome. Of course, <laughs> of course he does. You know because he's going to try to get away with things. He may be stubborn, but he's also very smart. Obviously, and he's trying to figure out. Ray, are you up for it, or you know, or should I be the boss? Uh, oh, but what I like, if I may, Lee, he, uh, Ray mentioned stress and nervous levels, and we talked about that on this show. But it speaks to the uh, word that you said a moment ago, and you repeated it a number of times, and that was the word energy or ener energetic. And I hope that maybe you can talk a bit more and emphasize how it, showing dogs is really about the energy that we are projecting, the energy that's going on between our dogs and ourselves. And we can control, we can shift that energy, can't we? So, you know, as, as, a, as a coach, as a leader, as a boss, um, can you remind us a little bit about how important it is to understand that there's energy happening? Um, well, I, I, yeah, and, and as a judge, um, I can see it when people come in the ring. Um, not every person, obviously, but a lot of times I can see that this person is really trying to be the one to be mm. there. They, maybe they are, um, let's just take an example. You've got two dogs and one is professionally handled by someone who's the dog usually wins. Okay. And the other dog is also very nice and shown by someone who is used to not winning, mm. right? Not being able to overcome, right? The, the other dog. And so that person starts to develop a bravado, right? In the ring. And so it's noticeable as bravado, mm. whereas the professional handler is 
energetically speaking, this is the dog to beat, right? And so it's it's sort of obvious when when there's two like that, two nice dogs, one is used to winning, one is really working it. And <laughs> so it comes down to which which of the dogs is better on the day. Um, but it is it's an interesting dynamic to observe from a judge's perspective doesn't interfere with the final outcome the final outcome is always on the dog but it's it's interesting to see this dynamic does that yes does that yes answer your it, question yeah uh for, for me it did and if i can just add on to that i'm picturing these two exhibitors in the ring one of whom is so focused on that other dog and wants so badly to to beat that other dog and you know, I think of the dog and handler teams that I'm watching and I'm drawn to their energy, aren't I? You know, I mean, I hopefully I'm looking, I'm drawn to the balance of the dog and the dog's free typical movement and condition, etc. But as often as not, I'm looking at the dog and handler team that is has energized me. They've created this quiet, confident aura about themselves. And if I'm in the ring with that team, I may be intimidated. I, I may initially think that they're the team to beat, but boy, am I getting a schooling on, on what to aspire to, on how my energy with my dog can be in the ring. And, you know, there, there are handlers and then there are great handlers. You know, some people have great hands. Some people need to learn to become their best. And that's something that we've talked about in great detail. But we are all capable of becoming better, of shifting the energy from the, oh, that dog always wins. Oh, that handler showed up. <laughs> oh, that, that judge doesn't like owner handlers. To this dog and I have been working so hard preparing. We have become such a team. We are in such a... Uh, you know, a, a tight space together that our energy just cannot be ignored. Maybe that's what you see as a judge sometimes as well, that hopefully, may, maybe, Lee, have you ever had a dog in your ring and you could tell the team needed some time and then they show up in your ring sometime later and you think, my goodness, well done. Does that happen as a judge that you you may occasionally realize Hey, they've come a long way. They're br they're bringing it this time, <laughs> you know. And, and and hopefully their dog is great on the day, and they go home with that that award that they hope to get. But um, do you is that part of your judging experience that you get to be right there, hands on, being part of that energy of uh, of improvement, if you will. Hmm. I think I put you on the spot with that question. Well, it, you know, it's it's interesting because that would mean that I would be comparing a previous um, presentation mm. that I had seen of that dog. And as a judge, I'm really focused on what's going on right now today um, and not on what Ha what happened before because it's really important i mean you've only got a few minutes and you've got to really focus on this is a dog on the day and so I i'm going to say mm, no. sometimes it could but then you have to dismiss that vision and continue to focus on what's right in front of you well let me then turn it around from the exhibitor's point of view. So I'm the owner handler. And in the past year, I, and by I, I mean all of us, we've been working hard. After a year, I am walking into that ring with my dog and I am bringing that energy. I know, and my competition knows because they were with me a year ago when it was not a great experience for my dog and myself. So if I bring to you the energy, um, I mean, I, I, you, 
the judge is going to give every consideration. And maybe that's the message to everyone who is listening, is that if the judge is on, on a time, two minute timer, if you will, um, and I've been working hard to prepare my dog to, to present himself or herself in the best light in those two minutes, the whole energy, the whole dynamic obviously changes. Now the judge can get her hands on the dog. The dog can move down and back correctly. The dog can go around. Obviously, the energy changes to that of an, uh, you know, a why am I second best all the time to I'm the dog to beat. And that's something that uh, you and I spoke about on Monday when we were discussing this topic. How do we go from, oh, that dog always wins to my dog is the dog to beat? And We've got a year's worth of shows, the Dog Show Mentor Program, to help all of us with that. But really having this mindset of the leader, the support, the boss, I think. I think for myself, Lee, once I realized I had a responsibility to step up and lead, you know, I had no choice than, than to do the work, right? Right. I mean, as you know, one of my favorite phrases and one of the things that i consider a leeism is you know, your number one job is to support your dog's experience in the ring and if you're not doing that it, you're not bringing it and that support extends to that energetic circle around you and your dog and how that how you show up with that to the judge I'd like to read Sandy's comment. We have a few comments here from Carrie and from Sandy. Sandy says, this is a fantastic topic, Lee. I've been head to head with a pro. We both have nice dogs. I'm struggling to beat them for breed. And I think I'm really concentrating too hard to be perfect versus changing my energy. That is true. I, you know, if I may, I was in class last night and, uh, I, I put my Irish water spaniel on a table because I know that my bitch at this point is very comfortable on the table. I'm trying to get her to, uh, to just be comfortable. That's my goal, be comfortable in this new environment. And so I said to my wonderful instructor, I said, listen, I'm not worried about her being a statue. I just want her to, to be comfortable with you. And thankfully the instructor understood. And I, what I realize is so often we see these perfect performances and we think that we have to be perfect right now. And, you know, and perfection is a wonderful thing to aspire to. It doesn't exist. Even that handler whose dog is perfect. And I'm using Sandy's words, that handler knows the dog's imperfections, but the, um, yeah, I think, I think the striving for perfection prevents us from realizing so many things and ultimately the win. We can be distracted uh, to the point of, you know, giving away the win because we're fussing over that one foot or that ear carriage, you know. Meanwhile, we're just basically giving it away because we're too focused on those things. And I think I'm rambling here, but Lee, any, 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 would a would a boss um would a boss is perfection something that a, that a boss wants and, and maybe, maybe the question is what does perfection mean to the dog show mentor <laughs> <laughs> no, let me let me just we don't right use that it. word i'm telling you we don't use that word it doesn't it, it's not a, it's not it's not the thing that that creates the the wins it that's that's not that's not it. Um, Sandy, uh, Sandy asked for tips and um, tips. That's, those are the secrets of Dr. Mm -hmm. Mentor. Um, okay. But what I liked is I liked seeing that Ragashwar said um, that learning the continuum of the experience of being at the show is what's important. Mm. And I love that because we are on a continuum of learning and, and our dogs aren't the same on every day, right? Our dogs aren't the same every day. They're living, breathing beings that have moods. Um, I was, I was at shows last weekend 
and I was exhibiting. I know Sandy was there and she she saw me um, exhibiting my my TTs. And so what we're what we're always striving for is just giving that dog that that essence um, of of the life, right? Of the life in the ring, of the time in the ring, of the joy, the sheer joy of being in the ring. And and it is a continuum of learning. So thank you for that. Um, Julie says, yes, um, I don't support my dog in the ring. He falls apart. And, and, it, and it's only because we're concentrating on something else outside of our energetic circle with our dog that's that's where that's where it lies that's where the whole thing lies that is a dog show mentorism if i've ever heard one believe thank you for sharing that ragashwar thank you for your comment as well i think that what you've said uh, should resonate with all of us yes learning is a continuum of experiences and ring ready live dog show mentor Show site magazine are all places where you can learn. You won't learn to be perfect, but you'll learn you will learn to be better and you will learn to be the support and the boss, the leader that your dog is is really waiting for you uh, to become. Your dog is just waiting for you to step up and sh and lead and your dog will indeed follow and the winds will follow as well. Lee, it's getting kind of late. I just want to thank everyone. And I also want to say that if Sandy or any of you are looking for tips, Dog Show Mentor, become a member and you will be guided by uh, the boss, if I may, a leader, a coach who's going to work with you one on one, bring you into a community of people that supports one another's goals and that really understands that it does indeed take a village um, to to get that championship and to achieve our goals. And Lee, uh, what you said a moment ago, we can't say often enough that our dogs are living, breathing, feeling, intuitive beings. They deserve everything that a child deserves, everything that anything that's living uh, deserves. Showing dogs is part of the fun, the experience that we share. But ultimately, you know, we are responsible for their happiness and their joy. And in return, they bring that into our lives as well. So um, I just want to say that we still have a few more minutes and I'd love to play What's the Word, Lee, if you have a, a few minutes. We are going back to our old format. We're going to look at some uh, more detailed definitions and uh, see if you can find these uh, not so obvious words. Uh, so the first is a word that is used, I should say a German word that is used for the short haired variety in the Saint Bernard. So it is a German word to describe the short hair in the Saint Bernard breed. So if you think you know that, or if you're fluent in German, or if Saint Bernard <laughs> is the breed, let us know. And if nobody guesses the answer, you're going to get to hear me use a very fake <laughs> German accent to say this. Oh, and word. you're going to say it anyway. We know it. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows the answer? Who knows? This is a tough one. But well, uh, while we're waiting here, I just want to remind people that um, if you have questions about Dog Show Mentor and what we do, or if you're considering being a member or um, you want to share with me uh, a particular challenge you're having, I do have a booking site where you can book a 15-minute uh, call. It's free, and um, I'm happy to speak with you. So, yeah, so no one has guessed this. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know exactly what you're saying, Lena, but uh, maybe <laughs> translation would help. I can tell you that that I don't believe that's the answer. I think we need to tell them, Dan. I think we'll tell them. So the German word used for the short hair in the St. Bernard is Stachhaarig. Did I say that correctly? It is Stachhaarig. 
So that you may or may not know that the St. Bernard breed comes in both a short haired and a long haired variety. So the Stachharig is the, there it is, Linda Stachharig. <laughs> Thank you. So moving right along, Lee, here we go. Um, this is the incomplete closing of bones in the center of the skull. There is a word that describes the incomplete closing of bones in the center of the skull. Now, newborns and infants have this, both canine and human, but there is a breed that as an adult may also have the bones of the skull incompletely closed. And there is a wonderful word that describes that. Fontaine's Fontini. Sandy is giving a very interesting guess. Not the word we're looking for, <laughs> Sandy, but we thank you for all of your guesses in our game. That That is the location, I believe, is the location, Sandy. But we're Almost. talking about the incomplete closure of that location. So we'll give you another moment or two. Uh, should we give them a hint? There's, there is, uh, Sandy's uh, giving it up. It happens a lot in Chihuahua. That is right. So if you know Chihuahuas. You Chihuahua you... people here? Fontanelle. We've got a lot of different variations of what appears to be the same <laughs> word, the same location on the skull. But the word that we're looking for as it applies especially to Chihuahuas is molera. M-O-L-E-R-A. The molera is the incomplete closing of the bones of the skull. I think a few of you need to get a copy of, um, of canine terminology. Yeah, Sandy's telling us that that's the <laughs> medical term. You know, it, medical terms are wonderful and, you know, very interesting language that's peculiar to the profession. But so are the, the words in the language that we use in the, in the, uh, yeah, in the dog speak. world. Dog We've speak, got, absolutely. You know, yeah, and, we, you know, most of us, over time, we become fluent in the language that we all use to speak. But some of these terms are very, very breed specific. And that's uh, a big part of what our game is all about. One last word. We're going to try this one. So the Chesapeake Bay Retriever is, uh, is seen in a number of colors. But this particular color varies from a reddish yellow through chestnut shades. So if we have any chessy fanciers or any, any hunters among our viewers, you may know that the Chesapeake Bay Retriever comes in this specific color. And it is a word that is used um, to describe this color variety in the Chesapeake. Sandy, again, dead grass. Dead grass is one of the color varieties, but the one that we're looking for describes a reddish yellow through chestnut shades. So the dead grass is a bit more yellow, but the reddish yellow through the chestnut shades is known as... Get out your Google. Get out your standard. Who has the Chessie standard in front of them? We'll give you another moment. Chesapeake Bay Retriever, AKC Standard, click. <laughs> it works. <laughs> Go for it. Scroll down, find color, and you're going to see this wonderful word. So, All right. I think you need to tell them. Oh, there, there you go. Cannonball Charlie, first yeah. of all, we love your name, <laughs> but the, the word is sedge. It is. Sedge Thank describes you. that particular color, coloration of coat in the Chesapeake Bay Retriever. So we hope that you've learned something here today. I know that I've learned a medical term, thank you, Sandy, that I didn't know before, but we hope that you've learned some more canine terminology. And as Lee said, if you can find a copy of Gilbert's canine terminology, grab it. Um, whatever the price, it is going to be worth it. It's going to support your, your journey in the sport forever. Uh, it's it a will. wonderful, wonderful resource, as is Lee Whittier, the dog show mentor. Thank you again for being with us today. Thank you for letting us know what's available through the program for all of us who yeah. want to become better and greater supporters for our dog's experiences in and out of the ring. And I just want to give a shout out to Megan, 
the customer relationship manager with Ring Ready, Megan at showsitemagazine.com. She's always available to help you with your goals, with your desires, with celebrating your wins with your dog. And uh, we want to thank each and every one of you for being here today. This is the last of a year's long set of shows. Lee, next week, we're going to be turning the calendar over and we're excited to be uh, here with our growing community at Ring yeah. if, if I could just um, pop in here and say, well, what we would like from you next week is for you to tell us what you learned this year from Ring Ready. So if you feel this has been valuable, which I think a lot of you do, please take a few minutes just to calm yourself, center, and think about, so what have I learned here? What are the important things? What's important to me in my process with my dog and showing my dog? And, and come back next week, you know, write, write down your answers and come back next week and put them in the chat for us because we really wanna know what was helpful. We can expand on some of those topics for you. Um, so is that okay, Dan? Uh, that's fantastic. <laughs> and, and, you know, may, maybe, maybe a shortcut uh, it would be to ask yourselves when you think of Ring Ready Live, what comes to mind, you know, right yeah. away? What comes to mind? And, so. and, and, and I, I'd like to say that maybe we could spend a few more minutes next week um, so that we can talk about what we presented and we can make sure that we get um, and talk about what uh, what other people got out of this. You so we'll think about that, too. You heard all it, right. folks. We look forward to seeing you all again next week. Until then, remember to work hard, work smart and have fun with your dogs. See you in the winter circle, everybody.